Stand by. Mark? Good. Speeding, it's all yours. The five-year strategic plan has many aspects, and can you go through some of those components of the plan? Yeah, Monica, it's, um, it's a plan that uh, we've spent over a year putting together. Uh, it really looks at uh, staying true to what's really found in what we call the Elkhart Promise. You know, we talk about in that promise how to, to know the name of every child, and how do you do that in a school district that's 12,700 strong. And really, we, we mean that each, each child will be taken care of, will know those strengths, will know those weaknesses. Where there are those strengths, we'll build upon them. Where we find those weaknesses, uh, we will build support around. And we'll do that by having what is really the second tier of that strategic plan is an engaging, highly effective staff. Our staff does amazing things, great things each and every day. And I'm sure many school corporations around the state would say that about their own staff, but we truly do have a great staff here. And so we feel if we can support our students with great staff, great things will happen. And finally, we need the support of our community, and that's really kind of the last part of the promise, that uh, we will not only get students college ready, career ready, but we'll also get them life ready, but we need the help of our community to do that. What are some specific components for the elementary school changes that you guys hope to implement? Well, one thing that um, we're hearing really from both political parties, and I'll be anxious to see what happens in the state of Indiana, but we're hearing pre-K and we're hearing it over and over again. And so we want to be ready. We want to set that uh, stage. If Indiana moves to pre-K, that we're ready to answer that challenge. So uh, one part of our plan really addresses pre-K. And you need to know we're doing some unique things with pre-K already. We have maybe one of the first public-private pre-K relationships found anywhere in the state. Uh, and we're doing some great things with our title dollars and through uh, federal dollars through Head Start. But if the state were to say pre-K tomorrow, would we be ready? And our plan over the next five years would get us ready for pre-K. Now to do that, uh, instead of adding on to every elementary, uh, what we've decided is to move to something that uh, actually many school corporations already have, and that is 6th, 7th, and 8th grade middle school concepts. You know, we really have a 7th and 8th grade junior high system, so our plan has us over the next five years moving to a 6th, 7th, and 8th, and really what that does, it opens up 40 classrooms across our district that we believe will someday make good pre-K classrooms. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of other pieces, uh, a fundamental piece will be a focus on literature, and getting our, our young folks uh, excited about reading, uh, not just teaching reading, but helping them develop a love for reading. Uh, as we uh, went through the strategic planning process, and we talked to secondary, we talked to middle school, we talked to elementary uh, teachers, uh, that underlying theme of uh, can our students read, read at level, and love to read, and so a part of our plan does that as well. Let's talk about some of the middle school changes. Sure. And, and just going off that to high school, because your high school would merge into one building, and there's obviously different opinions. Some students are in favor of sure. that and some are not. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, more than just students are in favor of that or not. Their parents are and community members are as well. Uh, but when you think about middle school, we've already made some significant changes to what we're doing in our middle school. You know, Elkhart several years ago uh, was offering courses at the middle school level for high school credit. And we are trying to bring that process back. We want to really increase the rigor for those that are ready at the middle school level. Uh, one very interesting side note to that is Elkhart Community Schools now has the largest agricultural program in the state of Indiana. And it's done through uh, our middle schools. Uh, in all of our middle schools, at Pier Moran Middle School, Northside Middle School, and Westside Middle School, we now offer an ag science program. And in doing so makes us one of the, or not one of, it makes us the largest ag program in the state of Indiana. Uh, when you say that to people around the state of Indiana, they think of Elkhart as an urban school. Uh, but if you think of our district, 
Uh, we are in some cases as rural as uh, any state, any school in the state, and in some cases as urban as any school in the state. And so our ability to offer ag in the county that historically is in the top five of agricultural production in the state of Indiana, we think is an important uh, part of our, of our plan. Uh, one key piece, and it's found really at the uh, uh, middle school level, is a program that would actually build up on the deep passions of our students. And so imagine coming out of your eighth grade year and being able to speak to a career that you're interested in and having explored that through the middle school uh, concept. Uh, so we're very excited about career college preparation, which would then lead us into a freshman division. You know, Elkhart, that's not a new concept to Elkhart. Elkhart, uh, before we split to two high schools, actually had a sophomore division in the old Elkhart High. What we've been told by people that were a part of that is that really brought those classes together before they moved on uh, into the actual Elkhart uh, school at that time, which I think would have been central before this campus was complete. And so we're trying to build up on that strength. Think about a freshman division. When you have the school play, who's going to get the lead? It's a freshman. When you have a uh, class uh, officers, a student council, who's going to be the president? Well, it'll be a freshman. And we can think of many uh, opportunities for our freshmen to develop before they would move over to a very rigorous, challenging 10, 11, and 12 high school campus. And we do call it a campus. What about some of the concerns, though, that have been expressed by the general public? How do you address those? Well, uh, more communication, uh, getting out, uh, getting in front of folks, being able to speak to what those concerns are. You know, everything from, uh, will my child get lost in such a large high school? Well, when you think of what uh, this 10, 11, and 12 campus would look like, it would only have about 2,600 students on that campus. Uh, you know, we don't have to go too far to our south, to Warsaw, to find a school that's comparable in size, or too far to our west in Valparaiso uh, to find schools that are that size. And I would contend this, and we have to do a better job whether we're one high school or two. We may, we've got to make sure our kids don't get lost right now in the current setup that we have. And you know what? That's true for a school that's 2,600. That would be uh, true for the high school that I graduated in, which had less than 500 students. How do we make sure no child gets lost, which goes back to that promise of we'll know every student's name. How will you ensure or improve highly effective instruction in, such as personal development and even your RISE evaluations? Yeah, uh, interesting. You know, I, I put our teachers up against any teachers across the state of Indiana. I would love for other teachers from around the state of Indiana to come to Elkhart and teach in our classrooms and let's see uh, how highly effective they are because we have great teachers. What we have to do is ongoing professional development, uh, professional learning communities that will take our, our teachers that are good, make them great, take those great teachers and turn them into master teachers. One of, the, one of your proposals is to eliminate Ds and Fs as grades. Can you explain the rationale behind this? Yeah, we, we came across uh, this concept really at another uh, freshman uh, uh, division somewhere else in the state of Indiana. And what is a D? Uh, a D is barely passing. Do we want our students to enter into a vibrant 10, 11, and 12th grade campus barely passing? Now, we believe that as educators, whoever walks through our door, we have to educate them, no matter what they bring through the door. And so by having this discussion about what, a, what does a D mean, uh, we think we need to get our students to something that's much better than that. And so if these kids come into the classroom and they have a lot of challenges and distractions, especially in their home environment, how do you plan to address that? Well, I, I think through a number of different ways. One, we talked about professional development for our teachers. Uh, we're talking about uh, developing a, what we call a work ethic certification. 
Uh, imagine this, imagine graduating from high school with a work ethic certification. Not just your GPA, not just your college track, but a uh, work ethic certification. You know what employers, when we talk to them, what they're asking for? Do students work well in teams? Do students show up? You know, what does their attendance rate look like? Uh, are they good citizens within the school? You know, in many of the uh, companies that are here in Elkhart, uh, when they hire Elkhart grads, very rarely do they ask for a GPA. They want to know about the, the content of the character of the student that graduated. And so a key piece of our strategic plan, whether we're one high school or two, is to bring forth this workforce certification. So imagine walking across the stage and not only do you have your sash for honor society, but maybe you have a sash for your work ethic certification, something that needs to be earned and not just given. We know that the five-year strategic plan was, was passed by a vote from six to one. What is the next step? Yeah, you know, it, that was really the, it sounds hard to say after a year and a half process, but that was really uh, permission. It was permission now to pursue this plan. And so uh, have we talked to architects about what possibilities are? Yes, we have. Have we uh, talked to financial institutions about the implications of that? Yes, we have. Uh, but have we gotten serious enough to where we actually wrote one of those groups a check? Uh, we've not taken it to that point yet. Uh, so we will start to investigate what those opportunities are for a campus. We believe right now at this point that the 10, 11, 12 uh, career college campus would be right here at, at this campus that we're having this interview in at Memorial High School. And why do we say that? One, we have a fantastic career center that already sits on this campus that I'll be honest with you is already underutilized. And so we believe by bringing our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders here uh, that we can take better utilization of that uh, wonderful facility. What do you hope to achieve with this new plan and what is your greatest goal? You know, uh, uh, we want to make the promise a reality. You know, that's what we hope to achieve. And whether we're one high school or two, we want that to be our reality. In the end, our community will guide us if we end up being one high school, just as it did about 40 years ago when it decides to move to two high schools. Uh, so uh, we've set out on this adventure. We'll see where it takes us. But our hope is that we truly do know every student by name. And that's just not by knowing uh, their first name. It's knowing who they are, what their interests are, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. And as a, an, an institution, how do we move them forward in their life journey? And we will do that with amazing staff, and we already know we have an amazing community and all working together, great things can be accomplished.